Hello, my friends. Here's part two of working with resistance. And I really want to emphasize at the beginning here of this video that there is a very real chance that you will watch this video and still not understand why you're having resistance. I often, when I'm working with people with a lot of resistance, will go over, I will ask them a lot of questions, like a lot of questions, and cross-check different things and go into their history of trauma and childhood and the way they were raised and kind of see how things are presenting and then we will try we will trial and error things we'll try certain things and I'll send them away with their homework and I'll have them come back and report on what happened and we'll see how the limbic system responds to their homework and, and so forth so actually working through resistance is usually a, a an in-depth process I work with people on over weeks of time and repeated coaching calls um, but I'm going to list some of the most common reasons I see and again, the actual contents of these things vary a lot from person to person. So this is gonna be a list. It might, it may or may not make sense. You may or may not find that you resonate with a lot of this. So just disclaimer. Um, okay, so I'm telling you what I've seen in four, four and a half years of coaching. So one, one reason, these are just all, I'm just gonna lay them out objectively. If you get triggered, just turn it off and come back. Sometimes people are outside their training zones or they don't have a training zone yet. That's one reason for resistance I see often is that a person is trying to use uh, their tools the way that like DNRS, for example, lays it out and they don't actually have a base, enough baseline of calm for that to be sustainable. And so they'll have what they think is limbic resistance, but really they don't have enough of a training zone at all or baseline of calm to be incrementally training. That's something I've seen quite a number of times. Or they're outside their training zone. That's just another thing. Um, a couple of these things, I'm just throwing stuff out there. Being in an abusive situation is a very common reason for resistance. That does not mean that that is your situation, but that's one I was in, I've seen, that's one. Uh, the fawn response, which is a trauma response around other people and finding safety through pleasing others instead of creating safety for ourselves. It tends to drive, uh, not for everybody, but a significant minority of people, it drives the entirety of their limbic impairment. Also, it's very effective at staying... Uh, below conscious awareness where it's driving your life and you don't even know it. So that's easy to miss, very easy to miss. That was my story as well. Um, another really basic one I really see a lot is just pops, just, just untrue beliefs or trauma patterns that are running in the background, driving people's lives. Um, and they don't, they don't realize it. They're not even aware that they're, that that's there. It's just like a continuous thought that's like the paint on the walls and you just don't even know it's there. But some of the specific pops or, or beliefs that I see a lot are uh, not really believing it's limbic, having specific expectations about how things should go in this process of recovery, um, believing that you can produce a specific outcome or address a specific symptom. You can't generate a specific outcome in a linear fashion in this process. It's more about like a plant creating the right environment and then the plant thrives, which is done by trial and error um, and, pr and, and preferably with uh, well-educated guidance or assistance. Um, searching, searching pops a big one for a lot of folks, not everybody, but just always looking for some other solution. Uh, always having one foot out the door, kind of like, well, I'm gonna retrain, but then if this doesn't work, I'm gonna do this instead. I'm gonna go to this doctor or try this treatment I haven't tried and they're not really all in. Um, not actually doing all of the principles, using all the principles of neuroplasticity. That's a big one. A lot of times people just, again, they're, they're not fully educated on how to use neuroplasticity properly. And that's not your, that's not, that's not anybody's fault. There's just not enough information, uh, nuanced information out there, which is why I'm talking to you right now, because I want to provide that uh, or more of it. And so that's a, that's a common one. It's just, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of detail in this process and it's very individual. So a lot of times it's just a matter of needing more information. Um, another big one is rewiring mechanically to just get better, fix symptoms or get relief instead of truly rewiring your limbic system from a place of love and sovereignty. That's a big one. And that's, that kind of is, segues into, uh, resistance is an invitation to transformation for a lot of people. It's a place where a lot of times for the first time ever, we actually real like we connect kind of face to face or heart to heart with this part of us that is terrified and really trying to protect us genuinely. Like really, it, it, it has your best interest at heart, your limbic system. So a lot of times we really are forced to step into a relational space with ourselves and our limbic systems and recovery for the first time when we're experiencing extreme resistance and it's no longer this mechanical process that's out there. It's very much this intimate relational process that's within your heart and within yourself. Um, 
another circumstances are a big one just a lot of circumstantial a lot of different circumstantial things and uh what a lot of folks call bullshit rules or rules we have you know a rule that we're just not allowed to do this or that's not okay or well you can't do that like and a lot of times you can do whatever that is you can but these things again they tend to run in the background under conscious awareness and that's part of why i do a lot of um, asking questions and kind of pulling on strings with people and coaching calls to try to pull things to, to the light because I know what to look for a lot of times um, when I when I know a person's story. Uh, specific traumas and core beliefs. Religious trauma is a big one. Belief that you aren't good, that you aren't worthy. Um, a lot of pushing or white knuckling, deep-seated fears, uh, just anything. Could be trauma from childhood, stuff like that. Um, Occasionally overpracticing is a cause for resistance, like really being too disciplined and too on top of things. Sometimes that can generate a lot of resistance. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I've got today. And one of the biggest things that I want to offer you as an antidote for resistance is it's really helpful at this point, again, to make, I know I talked about this last time, to make that choice. It really gives you a point of choice. And part of it is, this was the first, this is something I started doing when I had resistance and it, it served me very well for a very long time is kind of sitting down with yourself and really saying, okay, I'm doing this. I'm recovering. I don't care. Like, let me, I, I don't care. I'm, we're doing this. Like, I love you. Not in a bossy or mean way, but in an authoritative way, we're doing this. You might as well stop fighting me because I'm going to do this one way or the other. And, and you can fight me. It's just going to make it take longer, but I'm not really going to, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to back down. So you might as well just stop fighting me and make the, we'll make this easier. Um, and then again, really coming into this place of compassion where you realize that your limbic system's genuinely scared out of its mind. Like it's really, this process is terrifying for limbic systems. And being able to actually connect with that fear behind the resistance and have compassion for this part of you that's just scared, really scared and really trying to do, it's really trying to protect you from things that in previous uh, circumstances or situations in your life most likely wouldn't would have been dangerous to you as a small child who didn't have agency or all your brain function or ability to make your own money and things like that. So those those two things, just being very leveled, and that was something I got over time as I made that decision for myself and my journey of I'm doing this, so there's no point in you fighting me because it's gonna happen anyways. You might as well just give in to me now. Like I'm, I know what I'm doing and I love you and I'm doing this. So just let's do it together. Um, over time, the other thing I would add to that after I've got some practice under my belt was let me, you really think you're going to beat me? You never have, kid. Like, I always win. So just drop it. Like, I literally just sit there sometimes almost like with a dog. I'm like, just drop it. Drop it. Like, yeah. So those are some, some tips and tricks and some more of those reasons. Hopefully this sheds some light um, on, on this tricky topic for you guys. Love you all.